ceramic coat delta textile medium. Um, this is a, I believe this is an eight ounce bottle. It's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to $15, depending on where you get it. You can certainly look on Amazon. That is my commercial recommendation. However, I do make my own. This is my pearlescent. Uh, and that reason alone is one of the reasons I started making it. I like to see things shimmer. And if you all have ever seen my work, you know that that's a, a, a very important part of what makes my art. However, I also make a plain version of my fabric medium. This flower here, and um, I want you to notice it's, it's actually got kind of small little bits and parts to it. So I really think the best thing for me to do is to coat the area first with fabric medium and then come back in and do my color. Now this particular technique is called wet on dry. So we're going to get the fabric wet and then come in with a dry pencil and color in and then blend. But first, before I do that, I wanna show you um, what happens to pencils when you, or rather, excuse me, when you use um, um, brushes and these are sets of brushes that I'm, I'm going to need to throw away. And the reason, reason being is when they start looking like this. And for those of you who are newbies, if you see the bristles are splayed, um, they're, they're fuzzy. You're, if your brushes start looking like this, it's time to throw them away. This is what happens when you scrub on fabric. Of course, these, these brushes are not really meant for fabric. There are some out there, but I've used them and that, frankly, they're too stiff. Um, so what I'm going to tell you is just, again, try to find the least expensive brushes you can. Know that eventually they're going to look like this and know that eventually you will have to throw them away. Okay, so instead what I have done is I have brought in a brand new brush. This is a number two Filbert, uh, similar to the ones I was showing you earlier. And let me see if I can just move this up here a little bit. All right, so I have fabric medium right here and I am going to dip it in and I'm going to coat my flower first. Now, when people do this in class, the very first question they have is, well, how long will this last? Um, you can probably work with this for almost up to 30 minutes. I will say it's going to depend on the environment. In other words, is it really humid? If so, it will take longer to dry. Humidity, obviously, being that there's moisture in the air, um, does, not, does not absorb additional moisture as readily as when the air is dry. And uh, so, so I tell people if you're in Arizona, you know, you've probably got maybe 15 to 20 minutes. If you're in Houston, Shoot, you probably have up to an hour, and that's the God's honest truth. I'm a native Houstonian. Um, I do know um, the differences in the levels of humidity. I once lived in Las Vegas, so I'm comfortable with the dry side of things too. So I have lived in two extreme weather conditions and have a pretty good sense of how long each would last uh, as far as the time amount for how long it takes for this stuff to dry. Okay. Long-winded explanation for saying it just depends on the weather. So now what I've done is I've coated this entire flower with the fabric medium. And I am going to actually break a rule. And, you know, this is why rules are made, is to actually be broken. And I'm actually going to apply my dark color first. And I'm going to stick with the same colors that I was doing up here. And... Do you see these tiny little uh, smaller petals behind? What I want to do is I want those to be my darker color. So I'm just going to come in where I've put the fabric medium and notice the color goes on really strong right off the bat. Um, I'm not sure what that is. We're going to leave that for the time being. And by the way, this happens a lot with these embroidery patterns, particularly ones that are brand new to me. 
Um, until I see them stitched out, sometimes it's hard to tell how things are going to look. Um, that would be something I probably would come in and clean up after the fact, and I probably will before I put this out as a kit. Um, again, just kind of one of the benefits of buying blocks from me is I do try to get out there and clean these things up as best as possible. All right, so as you see, I'm just kind of going around, coloring. Now notice how nice and strongly vivid the color is. Um, this is the one beauty about putting the fabric medium down first. Now, having said that, please be aware that once you put the color on, there is no need for you to go back in and put additional fabric medium down. You can leave it just like this to dry. Uh, you may want to come in and touch up areas where you, you didn't get all the way into the stitching. Um, but again, that's no big deal. You just come over and rub the pencil up against there. But because the fabric medium is already down, there's no need to recoat it. Uh, sometimes I see this happening in class and students get these really soppy wet. And when that happens, when you get too much fabric medium on your fabric, the color will just smear around and you will not be happy. So I think what I wanna do next is come in with a bit, this is, let's see if I can turn this around, fl uh, flamingo, or pink flamingo, really nice color, brand new. This is one of the new ones that just came recently out with the 2023 new releases that, that they came out with. Now, again, I'm just gonna coat the tips and we'll just consider this one single petal. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we'll, we'll, we'll just consider it one petal. And notice I'm coming down a little on the sides with my color. Um, again, trying to get a more artsy look. Now, one of the things that will tell you if you've gotten fabric medium down or not is look at this one particular. The color went on really dark here, but it kind of went on skimpy. That means I probably didn't get any fabric medium up there. That means I am gonna to have to come back in if I want that color to stay and put a little bit more fabric medium on there. Um, this is another typical thing that happens with beginners. It's hard for you to tell where you have already put the fabric medium when you're using this technique. And so you will want to probably put a very, very light coat of additional fabric medium if you think that there is um, the chance that you didn't get it down. Because if you go to heat set this, and then you go to wash it. Anything that did not have fabric medium on it is going to wash out, and then you will get blotchiness. However, the good news is, is that you can actually, after it's been washed, go back in with some fabric medium and paint and color over, or ink tense pencil and cover over. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to use here, this is mango, again, one of the new colors, and I'm just gonna put a little bit right here. And the reason I'm leaving that blank space is what you will see here in a minute and maybe put a little bit around here. But bear in mind, it's still wet. That's why this color is going on really strong. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my brush again and I'm going to get the itty bittiest, and I know it's hard to see, but maybe if I turn it, you can see just a tiny bit of glob of fabric medium at the end. And I'm going to kind of start between the two of these and just blend those out. So I didn't need to bring all the color all the way. I'm just trying to create maybe a little light spot in the center. Now I did see, I didn't get fabric medium all the way up here. So I'm coming in and putting a little bit there. Oh, by the way, um, on that last flower that we did up here, you will want to go ahead and wash your brush out um, to make sure that the color doesn't stay in. If for any reason you do accidentally uh, forget to wash your brush out, which happens, then um, just use a bit of Dawn liquid detergent and you should be able to scrub it out without any problem. So notice I am blending the two colors together. Um, you can still see a bit of the pink, but where the two colors come together, um, kind of creates almost a bit of a coral. And this is just another way to blend. So uh, on this one, for instance, I, I didn't need any more fabric medium. I had enough on my brush. And I'm just kind of going back where I see little blotches. 
and uh, again a tiny bit more fabric medium on this one as I could see there was none up at the tip and I just keep going over these um, this is this is how easy it is for those of you who are watching this for the first time and have never done this truly this is all you need to know there's really there's there's obviously a ton of other things that you can learn to do but when I teach this in front of my students or if I'm demoing at a quilt show, honestly, I could do plenty of my artwork with nothing but these two techniques. I will show you a couple of additional tricks, um, but this, this is it for pencils. You really don't need much more than that. Now let's say again, um, you wanted a bit more of that pink um, to be more, you know, darker pink up at the tip. Once again, you just come in, you put a little bit more pink where you'd like it. Really a pretty color. By the way, Derwin Ink Tints pencils come in a hundred different colors, but the blocks right now, there's only 72. Just FYI. And again, come in and just lightly blend where you've put that additional color down. You don't need a whole lot of scrubbing. There's plenty of fabric medium down. Don't inundate your work with a fabric medium. Just come along. Now there's a spot right there where it did not have any fabric medium. All right, got that blended out. Just come in and use a little bit more, and that's it. All right, stay tuned. We'll have part three and tips and tricks with ink tense pencils.